All right, Bill, so the first thing I actually wanna go over is your grip, because I wanna make sure that we have the proper grip, that you're holding the racket correctly. Every stroke really starts with the grip. You gotta have the right grip. So I wanted to draw on my hand these two spots, the base knuckle of the index finger and the heel pad. So we're gonna be talking about where your right hand should be positioned. Those two places on your hand, and there's a straight line drawn between the two, should be positioned on bevel number two. So if you look, it's an octagon, 360 divided by eight. So each bevel is 45 degrees different than the previous bevel. Bevel number two, since you're right-handed, you're gonna count to the right. Bevel two is called the continental grip. Bevel one being on the top. Bevel two, counting to the right clockwise. This is the continental grip, bevel number two. So what you need to be doing with your, I can throw that, what you need to do is take this line and place it on the second bevel. So, bevel number two, you're gonna take the, the heel, the heel pad, put it right on bevel two, the knuckle on bevel two. If I open up my hand, you'll notice you cannot see the line. The, the racket shouldn't be like this, meaning the racket should be diagonal. So you're gonna grab on, making sure that the heel of your hand and the base knuckle of your index finger is on bevel number two. This is also the grip you should be using for the serve, but, or the best grip you should use for the serve. But I wanna make sure that you're getting this grip and using this grip because it's gonna help us in closing our racket face and getting farther below the ball, which is a really big thing for you. So I've got the, uh, the Topspin Pro here and you might remember that I talked about the, the ready position and how your ready position looks like this. You don't want a starting position. You don't want a waiting position. You want a ready position. You want to be truly be ready. The way we know what a ready position should be is where do we want to be in the back? What we want, so I'm going to start with this first. The ready position wasn't invented first. <laughs> the ready position was actually invented second because in the world of tennis, you know, back 200 years ago or 100 years ago, whatever it was, the, the racket is best in this position where the tip of the racket is pointing up. Well, since we want this position, that means this should be the starting position. You want to start in this position so that you can get into this position. At the moment, you'll remember your racket's like this. Your elbows are sunk in, the racket's kind of laying off to the left, and you'll see this from the back as when I do the back view here in a second, but your racket's like this. So then when the ball comes to you, you turn your body, your racket kind of hangs out here a little bit, very similar to your forehand, and then when your racket goes back, it's basically just straight back, and then it goes straight forward. I'm gonna be asking you to drop your racket for racket speed, to get more racket speed, six miles an hour for every foot that it drops, just due to gravity, and getting the racket then below the ball so we can brush up the back. So getting this position in the back is vital, but it's gonna be actually assisted by having this position. So instead of the hands down and the racket off to the side, get your hands forward, racket up, elbows out, and you're gonna be waiting in this position. Just that is gonna make a difference. I, I just don't get why coaches uh, online teach have a relaxed and athletic ready position. I mean, you can't just compare yourself to, to the pros. I watched a video uh, about uh, of Rod Laver, and literally Rod Laver, he's playing tennis and his arms are like this. He's playing Connors. He's hitting and his arms are like this. Rod Laver can get away with that. You and I cannot. So we need to have every bit of help we can get. So that's gonna be this ready position. Elbows out, racket head up. A good distance between our racket and our body. The moment we see that ball come off the opponent's racket, the moment, and I mentioned on your forehand video, by the time the ball crosses the net, I want your racket all the way back. The exact same thing. The moment the ball is hit, you're gonna take your racket back. Now, we talked about the grip. You're gonna be waiting in the forehand grip in your ready position. You're gonna be waiting in this position. And then the moment the ball comes off the opponent's racket, you're gonna change your grip. The grip change is hidden in the turn. The grip change is hidden from here to here. So I've already changed my grip. So you're gonna have to get used to, and I'll show you the drills I want you to practice. You're gonna have to get used to, Bill, that grip change, making sure that you're changing the grip and that you get it precise. It's a little hard, especially because I had to blow up the video. It's grainy. It's, it's hard to see sometimes what grip somebody is using, so I wanted to make sure that you truly got a continental grip. So as soon as the ball comes off your opponent's racket, you're gonna turn your body sideways. You're gonna change your grip. I also want you to notice this back elbow. You don't want your left elbow down. You want your left elbow up. You'll see this from the back view. 
It's called a chicken wing. Most players, they make fun of or they go, well, they, you don't need your elbows out in the ready position. Well, why is it called a ready position? It's called a ready position because you want your elbows out in the back. You don't want your elbows sunken in. That's when you start swinging like this. You're all jammed, you have no extension. So you want this back elbow up, so start with it up. The reason you want your forehand elbow up in the ready position in case it's a forehand because you want this elbow up. So no matter which way you turn, forehand or backhand, you want to have that back elbow up. So have them both up in the ready position and then it's already set. So as soon as the ball comes off the racket, we change the grip, we turn our body, and the goal is that we get into this position by the, ball, the time the ball crosses the net, long before the ball bounces. And then we move into position with our racket all the way back. A good way to think of it is put your racket in a ready position behind you. So let me show you what I mean here. I see the ball come off my opponent's racket. I turn my body, I change my grip, I put my racket all the way back. Now watch, if I just turn around and face my racket, I'm in a ready position if I go back to my forehand grip. So notice my racket's here. If I turn, change my grip, and then look back over the net, then I'm back in my turned position, checkpoint number two, where the ready position is checkpoint number one, this position in the back, the unit turn, is checkpoint number two. If you have to run far to get to the ball, I don't want you in checkpoint two running. That's gonna be you know, one out of every 10 shots where you've gotta just sprint to go get the ball. Most balls that come to you, as soon as the ball is hit, it's gonna be within about four steps. So you can take those four steps with your racket all the way back. If you've got a sprint, if you get pushed back to the fence, then your opponent hits a drop shot to your back inside, you're not gonna run with your racket all the way back. This is gonna be 90% of the time, there is always that exception if the ball is hit really far away from you and you got a sprint. You can actually pump your arms, then when you get there, set your racket and hit. But I'm just talking about the, the vast majority of the shots. So the ball is hit, we move around, our racket's all the way back in a ready position behind us. Now, because the tip of the racket is up, we're gonna be able to drop the racket below contact, here's contact, we're gonna drop the racket down below contact, we're gonna get a lot more racket speed. Just like the bike, just like the car going downhill, we want to gain racket speed. At the moment, you swing very flat, and you're very close, your elbows are in, you're very close to the ball, and you swing basically straight forward into the shot. So you're not gonna be lifting the ball over the net, you're gonna get a lot of side spin, which means people who hit side spin, Bill, hit the net a lot and they hit out a lot. People who hit top spin can lift, the ball goes up over the net and then top spin just sucks it down into the court. So you become super consistent. You hit it up over the net and you suck it down into the court. So we wanna be in this position, but we wanna drop way down below contact. I mean, I can touch the ground with my racket. I'm gonna drop down below the ball to be able to come back up to the ball. When you drop the racket, Bill, it's gonna be important that you close the racket face. Closing the racket face just simply means tilting the strings down toward the ground. So when you drop the racket, you can't have the racket straight up and down as you did when your racket was even with the ball. Now you're gonna to have to drop the racket and tilt the strings down toward the ground. From the back, it looks like this. When you tilt your racket down, that's what leads to the strings being facing forward at contact. If your racket is straight up and down in the back, meaning I wish I had a coin right now, but if I could balance a coin on the edge of the racket, if the racket is on its edge and you are below the ball and you swing up, the racket will be open and the ball will take off, which obviously we don't want. Since topspin is a low to high swing, topspin is brushing up the back of the ball. What we need to do is make sure that we're swinging up but that our strings are not pointing up. If your strings are pointing up, that's when the ball is gonna take off. So what we need is to drop your racket down, tilting the strings down toward the ground. That's what's gonna to lead to you swinging low to high, but the racket's gonna be facing forward. Let me show you, this product is called the Topspin Pro. I wanna show you the topspin on this ball. See all the balls rolling? So what we wanna do is go from below the ball to above the ball and brush swinging low to high, swinging up the back of this ball. So again, we are below the ball and we brush low to high going from the ground to the ceiling. So we're in the ready position. As soon as the ball is hit to us, we change the grip and we put the racket all the way back. 
you might hear the kids right next to me. <laughs> um, sorry about that. So the racket's back here. As soon as we drop, we get farther below the ball so that we can swing low to high and brush. We're going low to high brushing. So we don't want to do this. We don't want to just smack into the ball. We want to go from down here and brush up toward the sky. Now, about that upward swing, you have a very quick, it's what I call the, the bicep curl. You have a very quick bicep curl follow through. You hit and then you immediately bend your elbows. So rather than bending your elbows like this, you should swing and you should put your racket all the way up here. I want you to feel like you're trying to touch the clouds. You're gonna swing from down here and you're gonna brush and you're gonna go all the way up super, super high. From here, that's when you can then relax. When I go in my backhand, when I go to my finish, Bill, my racket drops to that point. When you swing, your racket lifts to this point. That's the difference. So you go up to here, I go way up, and then I drop to here. And when I drop, I still finish higher than you when you go up. So the goal is to swing up toward the sky. You can see my arms are extended and then I'm dropping and my hands are still quite high. You can see my hands higher than head level in the video I showed you. So we got the ready position. As Soon as the ball is hit to us, we change our grip to the continental. We turn our body and get the racket back all the way. Tip of the racket pointing up. We then moving around from that position, we drop down below contact and then we swing low to high. Again, we're gonna stay away from this ball. Getting this distance and not being like this, swinging across is gonna give us more distance away from the ball. Again, more on that from the back view. But we're gonna drop way below the ball, closing the racket face, making sure the strings are tilted down so that when we swing up, the racket is facing forward, swinging from below the ball to above the ball. And then after we hit, we're gonna feel like we're touching the clouds with our racket and then drop to a position that's higher than head level. Let me show you from the back and I think it's gonna make a lot more sense from the back view. All right, Bill, so from the back, the first thing is the ready position. So you'll notice you can see my elbows, where here you can't. Also, you'll notice that your racket, when you film yourself from the back, is laying off to the left with your elbows down. You shouldn't be able to see your, your racket. The racket should be not visible and your elbow should be flared out like this. Again, from the front, it'll look like this. You want your elbows out because if it's a forehand, you want this elbow up. And if it's a backhand, you want this elbow up. The elbow up helps keep the racket vertical. When your elbow drops, that's when the racket starts to lay open. When the racket lays open, it's tough to close it. So that elbow up is really key. So the elbows are out. The moment the ball has hit you, you're gonna turn immediately, change your grip, and the racket's up in this position. Again, this is a ready position behind you. If I face you, I'm in the ready position facing you. But it's called the on edge position in the back because all you can see is the edge of the racket. So the ball is hit, you change your grip, you turn and put your racket all the way behind you. The next thing is as soon as you notice that it's time to swing and you're ready to accelerate, the racket needs to drop down. You've got to drop down lower than the contact and you've got to close the face. Your racket is very used to swinging flat into the back of the ball. You're used to swinging from here straight into the ball and you're very close to the ball. What we wanna do is obviously stand farther away from the ball and you're gonna do that by just making sure you stand more right of, where the, of the line that the ball is gonna be traveling. You're gonna drop down, you're gonna tilt your strings down toward the ground and that's what's gonna allow your racket to then face forward when you swing what's called inside out, close to you to away from you with your strings facing over the net. So your racket's up, you're gonna drop down below contact, then you're gonna swing up low to high and you're gonna be brushing up the ball. You'll notice I'm below the contact, you'll now see that I'm above contact. So my racket is going up toward the sky as I hit the ball, rather than thinking I'm gonna swing toward my target. What I love about the Topspin Pro, and I'm, I'm an affiliate for this product, I think it's just amazing. We have five of, them, five of them at our tennis club. I have one here to teach my kids. But being able to force the student to swing up because the shield is there and it doesn't let you swing flat into it, forcing you to swing toward the sky, it's just an ingenious uh, design that actually forces the upward swing. So you're gonna be down here, you're gonna swing up toward the sky, and then swinging low to high is, that, is, is what's gonna allow you to then drop your racket down to the high finish. 
I don't want you to, from the side, you remember, kind of do that bicep curl thing, because it just shortens the contact zone, you frame the ball out, the ball always lands short. I want you to kind of have that extension like Connors back in the day, where he would really extend up high and out, and then bend. The bending should happen after you extend all the way up. The extension is checkpoint number five. The finish is checkpoint six. So it's ready position is checkpoint one. The on edge position, ready position in the back is checkpoint two. Dropping down is checkpoint three. The contact is checkpoint four. The extension high is checkpoint five and the finish is checkpoint six. Again, checkpoints are just like mile markers. They're places you can flip or you know, scroll through your video to check things out and see what you are noticing. So what I want you to do is f send me videos of a simple progression. I want you sending me videos of you shadow swinging, and just send them a direct message, shadow swinging from the ready position, just shadow swing the turn. Back elbow up, tip of the racket up, you know, two heads are better than one, racket up, and you're just gonna make that move. Forehand grip, turn, backhand grip. Ready position, forehand grip, turn, backhand grip. You'll notice I'm getting sideways at the exact moment my racket's getting back. I don't want you to turn and then have it a separate move to get the racket all the way back. They go all the way back and your body turns at the same time. Your racket gets all the way back at the time your body gets sideways. So your body goes 90, the racket goes 180 in the same amount of time. That, do that for one week. I mean this. <laughs> do this for one week, 50 times a day. Ready position? That's one. That's two. And by the way, I'm changing my grip as I do this. Forehand grip, backhand grip. And I'm putting that line on bevel number two. So I'm making that move. Checkpoint number two. Right? Checkpoint one, checkpoint number two. And you can do that 50 times a day. You could do it, it would take you two minutes to do it. Send me a video of you practicing that. And I'll, I'll let you know what I see. Just make sure that elbow's up. You know, make sure the racket tip is up enough. Then the next thing is, you've got to go from one to two to three. One to two to three. And I want you to bend your knees. I want you to get low with your body. I don't want you dropping with your legs straight because then you can't get far enough below the ball. Bending your knees, you'll notice just bending, look how much closer my racket gets to the ground. So you gotta bend as you drop. You're also gonna bend your knees as you drop the racket. So you can get even lower below the ball. Notice my racket's tilted closed. So you don't want it on edge because when it's on edge in the back, it'll always be open at contact. When the racket's closed, that's when the strings will face forward at contact. So this is week number two. Ready position, all the way back, drop. You're gonna do that over and over. Ready position, all the way back, drop. And when you do this, be aware. Like I can look back and go, oh, I'm gonna make sure I'm on edge. Then I'm gonna drop and make sure I'm closed. And I do that over and over again. All the way back, drop. I mean, if somebody actually did this, you know, it, it isn't just something that I'm saying. If you were to actually every day do that 50 times for a week, and then the next week, go checkpoint one to checkpoint two to checkpoint three, which is the drop. Then the next week, and then you add, without even hitting tennis balls right now, if you just shadow swing this, it would take you, I don't know, five weeks, and you would do all the checkpoints. One to two, one to two to three, one to two, three, four, one, two, three, five, and all the way to six. Ready position, all the way back, drop. If you do this 50 times a day for an entire week, you would, your backhand would be sick. You'd never miss a backhand. It's, you know, I'm, I'm prescribing this, <laughs> this medicine, so I want you to take it. So now you're down low, and then we're gonna go up to contact. From down low, up to contact. You can see how I'm not standing right on top of the ball. I'm standing far away. So I'm in the ready position. As soon as the ball is hit to me, I change my grip, I put the racket all the way back, I drop, and I go up to contact. Now you remember, when my racket dropped and my body went down, I now want to then do the opposite. I want to lift the racket and bring the body back up. So I want to go down and then use the ground as a power source. So I'm high, down low, close the racket face, then I come up to the ball. So ready position, as soon as the ball is hit, I change my grip, I turn my body 90 degrees, racket's all the way back in the ready position. I then drop, I get super low below the ball, I come up, and since I'm swinging low to high, that's when I'm going to be able to spin the ball. I'm going to be able to go from here up, so I'm below contact to above contact, and I'm getting this ball 
to spin. I'm, tr I'm really thinking, how can I get this ball to rotate over itself? That's what's gonna pull that ball down into the court. And then when I swing low to high, I finish super high, ready position, turn, rackets up. I drop and close the racket, I swing low to high, I finish high, but because I'm accelerating and I'm swinging really fast, I then have to have somewhat of a relaxation, much like a golfer will finish. I go up nice and high and then I relax, but you'll notice my hands are still higher than my head. And the reason, even, even after I drop, and the reason is because I went up after contact, not swinging flat into it where it looked like I was doing a bicep curl. So all I want you to do is just add piece after piece after piece from the ready position from the first week. I mean, I would love it in the next couple days if you sent me a video of you just going from checkpoint one to checkpoint two. I have a guy in Singapore, Daniel, who I did a video lesson for six months ago. He, just this morning, he said, it was on his serve. Just this morning, he sent me more videos. This is probably the 50th video he sent me in direct message of his serve. He's a fanatic, I love it. His serve looks no where near what it did six months ago. Um, because every week he's just sending me a new video. Hey, how's this? He showed me a video of him wearing a birthday hat and pronating. So this is real that I want you to send me videos of you practicing in your backyard, practicing shadow swinging. You can just do this with your, in your kitchen with a wooden spoon. I mean, we gotta do what we gotta do right now, but I want you to, sh to show me you practicing and shadow swinging these things because the ball doesn't know who you are. And if you hit a backhand like Novak Djokovic with the technique of Novak Djokovic, it'll think you're Novak Djokovic. Now we can't swing as fast as he does, but I mean, we can do what he does. Like our body moves the way his does, not ex as explosively and not with as great balance as he does, but our body does what his body does. And so we can have that kind of technique. So I'm super excited for you because at the moment, I, I know the backhand's a frustration point for you. Uh, but with these, I hope, clear instructions on the grip, the turn, the drop, closing the racket face, and low to high with a really high finish, <laughs> your backhand's gonna be ridiculous. I love it. So thank you so much. Please, Bill, send me those videos in direct message on Instagram, and I really appreciate your support. Have a great day.